Hello, welcome to Todd Miller TV. Joined here today with Juana, and we are going to talk about um, all the investors that came and bought and what that has done to the rental market. So, um, the supply of homes has decreased tremendously, and a lot of those were investors. So, a lot of those houses that were previously vacant are that without anybody to be able to uh, rent them, a landlord, have been bought by investors. So, now we have sort of an influx of rental properties. Right. So how has that affected uh, people trying to get printed, uh, properties rented? Well, right now there are a lot of properties on the market to be rented, which is good for, you know, for everybody. It's a nice, healthy market. The properties that are renting are the ones that are priced well and have had repairs. They need to look good. They need to smell good. Uh, properties that have fresh paint, clean carpet, appliances, those tend to rent a lot faster. Um, but there isn't a premium associated with that. Okay, okay. so uh, the other thing is tenants don't have a refrigerator or a washer and dryer, so you have to make sure that you're including those in your rental. Um, there are lots of options for investors as far as that, um, and nothing against Best Buy and Home Depot, but there are other choices besides those. Uh, there are lots of appliance dealers in town that have gently used or um, slightly dinged appliances that are at a substantial discount and that makes sense for a rental property. Uh, if your rental property has um, comes with those appliances, make sure that you're buying the extended the, uh, the homeowner's warranty that covers those appliances as well. It's very easy for those appliances to not uh, to not work, particularly when a house has been sitting there empty for a long time. Um, we tend to run into refrigerators that either run or break down very quickly after they, uh, they, they're, they're being used. Same thing with washers and dryers. Uh, they tend to break down usually within the first three months that a tenant is in there because they have not been used for a long time or because they weren't taken care of in the first place and you know they're in, um, in a home that was, was abandoned or bank owned. So th there's a reason why those things don't work very well. So you want to make sure that you've got a home warranty on them. Um, and they're going to they're going to cover that and help you with those costs. Okay, so home warranty that includes appliances. Right. What do you say to the investor who says, "Well, go ahead and put it on the market. I'm not going to put appliances in it right now, and then if they want appliances, I'll put them in later." Um, you know that's fine for the washer and dryer. Uh, you know you can certainly put a sign up in the laundry room saying, "Hey, washer and dryer to be installed uh, upon lease signing," and that's fine. Uh, on the refrigerator portion, I would say not. I would say go ahead and put your fridge in. There's okay. nothing like somebody walking into a house, seeing a side-by-side -side refrigerator with an ice maker in the door. Uh, you know, especially men really like that. And I'm sorry, guys, if that's sexist, but um, but guys walk in and they like that refrigerator when they walk in. <laughs> okay. So, but so, do you think people though are a little afraid a tenant, for example, who walks into a house and sees a hole where there should be a washer dryer and then a sign saying we'll put them in at lease siding and then getting a crappy washer and dryer put in and then going oh great we got a washer dryer but right. I mean people want to see what they're going to pay for. Right, they do, they do. I know a lot of people don't want to put them in right away because especially uh, people who are new to the rental market they say well what if they have their own. It is very rare that a tent will have their own washer and dryer. I mean, it's right. almost unheard of. So I would say put your appliances in. It, it's not a big deal, particularly since you're going to be buying them gently used. You're not paying, you know, thousands of dollars. Uh, it's it's not a big deal, and you may as well just have them put in. Um, given the fact that maybe rents have softened just a little mm -hmm. bit, and that prices have started to go up because of the depleted inventory, do you think it's still an opportunity out there for an investor to have a long-term rental. It is. I mean, you know, there's still really good tenants out there. People are relocating all the time. And depending on where your property is and what your market is, there are different times of the year when that makes sense. So say, for example, um, your market is the high-rise market, okay, which is a pretty unique market. Um, what happens is in the, in the late spring, sometime in May, uh, a lot of the hospitals are acquiring their residents. Mm -hmm. And so those guys uh, tend to like to rent in the high rises. Okay. So you see an influx of uh, of residents uh, renting the high rise uh, units. Um, the other thing that happens in uh, in May is the people from Nellis. That's when the rotation uh, takes place. Right. So you see 
the people that are being transferred to Nellis Air Force Base, they're coming in and they're renting in May. So different times of the year attract different people. Um, teachers come in in, in in July and August. So that, that's a different market. So there are different times of the year. You have different opportunities depending on where your property is located and the type of property that you have. Okay. What would you say ultimately, um, because we, we know prices are going up mm -hmm. and now we're getting these mixed reports where some of the national news organizations say, oh, the, the market bottomed in 2012. And I, I think it bottomed last year in 2011. At least here in Ve Las Vegas, the real estate market bottomed in 2011. Um, that, that everyone's now trying to predict the next wave of when these REOs that nationwide haven't been foreclosing on are going to start trickling out and they're saying, oh, well, when they hit the market again, the prices will go down. I mean, what do you say to somebody who just who sees prices rising right now and then they want to jump in? Real estate is a long term, it's a long -term endeavor, okay? okay? Um, you're not going to be able to time it. I mean, I don't care how good you are. If, 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 if anybody was that good, uh, they'd be retired and they wouldn't be doing, playing the game anymore. Okay. okay. So look, real estate is a long-term thing. As far as the market being flooded with properties, I cannot imagine that happening, and for a lot of reasons. Uh, one of them, and the major reason, is it would be systemically I improbable to happen. Okay. The system simply cannot process REOs in the way that it did at the beginning. It's different this time around. There are a lot more restrictions. Uh, the, the process is much slower. It's much more cumbersome. Right. There is no way that they can bring a wave of properties to market. Even if they wanted to, they couldn't. Well, the other reason is lessons have been learned. They learn not, not to dump a lot of properties on the market, the, prop, the, the market cannot absorb them, and they lose value. So they're not going to do that again. Well, I, I did a video, I think last week or two weeks ago, where I officially declared the REO boom over. Okay. And um, I predicted that what we'll see for years is just slow, tr normal trickle, and it's actually healthy to have inventory come on the market because these houses otherwise wouldn't come on the market because you've got someone living there for free mm -hmm. and they'll just stay there and it wouldn't be a house that could be bought by somebody. Right. So. Plus, when these properties come on the market, depending on who, which bank owns them, the bank may actually make repairs or if the bank doesn't, when an investor purchases them, they make, they make repairs to the property. So it's, it's good for everybody. You've got these properties that are uh, not being kept up now that will be improved. Uh, that makes property values stabilize and increase in that area. Right. Plus, that generates um, additional uh, revenue throughout the economy by purchasing carpet, appliances, different things. So it, it's good for everybody. Okay. Good. All right. So I just wanted to share some insight with Juana and have the, you tell all the people uh, your great, vast knowledge about uh, tenants and property management in the real estate market. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, anyway, that is my video update for today and hope to see you in the future. Thanks.